What's up guys? Hope you guys are having a good night. Just making a quick little demo video of these new recoils I put in here. Only had 20 minutes of tuning. Kind of by ear. On the back seat and then uh, I could not find any other place to install these things in a Yukon slash Tahoe Suburban or Chevy truck if it had the center console in it. Uh, had to cut the plastic and then some of the plastic behind it. It's open, so <clears throat> pain in the ass. But these are doing okay. They have a softer sound than the CT sounds for sure. These are more aggressive. Not that they're harsh, but these do kick. I mean, they got twice the motor on the back, and they're a lot stiffer. Paper cones are stiffer. Those are real, these are very light cone. But I mean, I can't argue with the price. The price is so uh, affordable. You know, you spend. You spend 30 to 30, probably 30 dollars per mid on these. I don't know at the time, and those eights were like 40 45 bucks a piece. And these are like 30 32 dollars for 32 or 35 for a pair of these. So these are doing pretty good. I got a little cedar spacer rings on there. And here is the other one. It's not too bad, it's not the prettiest thing, but I think it works. Well, yeah, give you guys a little bit of a demo. Here in a second, I'm gonna go over an overview of the current status of the the ongoing ever build that never stops. Welcome to a base heads world. So anyway, so you guys have seen the cabs multiple times. I got all the sky high two watt. You know, there's no subs in here. Obviously, nothing in here yet. Got the Anderson connectors from uh, BestBoatWire.com. These are four watt connectors. And then all the OFC. And then, uh, so you got that lightning audio amp that somebody gave me. And I'm like, fine, I'll take it. It's made by Rockford. I used to have one of these in high school. So these are pretty pretty good. Like I said, I had to turn it sideways. The only way I could have it to fit over top. I got these, uh, not right there, but I have the, because it wouldn't fit between the seat frame and the other amp. But I got three of these little, uh, little wooden spacers, uh, dowels. I just cut some dowels down to size and put them in there so it's not touching yet. But yeah, everything's still good on the CT, or the uh, CT sounds, the uh, sound stream app. So I got some Sky High Car Audio, a little two-channel. RCA's, I got these Scott Bowman Customs uh, RCA distribution block. I've had that for years now. And then, uh, some Stinger RCA's feeding that from the back of the radio, which those have been pretty good. I've been pretty happy with those. They get a little loose, you gotta squeeze them sometimes. But anyway, I'll give you guys a little bit of a custom demo. So I got the four CT Sounds six and a halfs in the back. I got two CT Sounds six and a halfs in the front, two eights by CT Sounds. I have the, the tweeters and the custom little pods I made. Got tweeters over yonder in the back. Now these two in the back are ran off of the uh, head unit in a sense. It was free and they fit. All they had to do is cut out the uh, little three and a half stock speakers and then put these over top of it. Put some bolts on there. Not too bad. Went over here. All right, let's get going. Freaking rain, Michigan. Gotta love it. Anyways, give a little quick demo. Let's see here, what we got, what we got. Here's the old Pine Urban. Lost in the darkness and now I want no more My dreams are all faded away A fire is burning but deep down I know That one in it drives me insane I need you to come back, I can't let you go I look at the stars and I pray I wanna be there like never before Give you my all if you stay
Yeah. They sound pretty good. They're definitely not like home audio speakers. They are a little, a little rough, so I had to do a lot of tuning to get some of the treble out and get the bass out. So these have used to get hot all the time. Yeah, and I'm sure you've seen in the video, these six and a half definitely move a lot more than the eights. Ugh, the eights are a lot rated for a lot more power, so. I mean, it is what it is. I think they both sound good. And I'm trying something new too. The, uh, cause I, I don't know, I overthink a lot of stuff. But these speakers, being in the center console, so I have the frequencies kind of crisscross, and actually, at, so far, it seems to sound okay. So, obviously, I have left frequencies here. So left front. Well, I have right front over there. Well, here is actually a right frequency. So I have left and right for me, and then I have left and right for the passenger. Uh, it's, I don't know, I guess I'm just being picky, but I just think it sounds better that way. I could be wrong. Prove me, prove me wrong. I could like, I like to learn, but uh, to me it sounds like, it feels like I have, I'm in my little cockpit here. Listening to some older, uh, what do you call it, classic rock. I was listening to some Van Halen earlier. It almost sounds like both sides are here with me. But I still kind of pick my head up, and you can still hear the tweeters up there and everything else. So I'm not 100% sure, but eventually I'll probably crisscross it to where it's both left over here. My only fear is if I have two left frequencies, one on my left ear and my right ear, I might not hardly even hear the right side, if you get what I'm saying. So, but yeah. Anyways, none of that nonsense. Uh, going to be building a box hopefully soon for 318s and doing a major slot port in there uh, yeah basically uh, most guys think they can fit 418s back there that's impossible you can't there's just no way uh, you have to have it to the ceiling because you would get less than three cubic foot per woofer ported if you had 418s back there. So my 318s, I have no idea what the TS parameters are. I literally got these, um, uh, they were 10s, and I got them from fuaudio.com. One of my buddies talked me into it, and well, it's a mistake. Three of them had extreme coil rub out of, out of the four. I sold the good one to somebody at work, and then I decided to recone them into 18s, and I went to lordbase.com and did some measurements, I ordered one of those Biflar coils, and it said, oh yeah, it's rated for like a thousand watts, good RMS. I'm like, well, they've been taking some good power. They've been taking, they, they probably take 2K all day long. So the 318s and the two cabs, I'm gonna try to have 4.8 cubic feet per woofer after port and net, uh, after it's net, whatever. So after port and self-displacement, uh, 225 or 230 square inches of port. And then uh, my tuning should be 25, 26 hertz. I'm sure if I put the extra box bracing, because I'm not gonna try to use too much fiberglass resin. It doesn't seem to work out for me when I cake it in there with like two, three gallons of it. But I'm gonna do a little bit of that and I'm gonna do some threaded rod on the inside. And then uh, we'll try to tune from there. So I like the lows, everybody does. It seems like if I don't tune my stuff around 30 hertz, I don't, I'm not happy with it, so do 26, 27 hertz with more square inches of port than I did with the 15 inch arrow port that I used to have. I built a box a long time ago for those 318s and it hit really, really low. I mean, it hit 25 hertz all day long with authority, but it felt like it was kind of choked out. The box was plenty big, but there wasn't enough port. I think that was only like 150 square inches of port. So we're almost doubling that and uh, it should be pretty good. I don't have very much power on them. Those two cabs strapped, certified, only do like 3,500 watts. So if I get 4,000 watts on a burp, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy camper because the two alternators on this truck only produce so much. So anyways, later guys.